Emma smiled proudly, thinking she caught someone rummaging through garbage. Little did she know, this mistake would lead to her demise. My name's Sally, I'm 32. I work at a TV and film studio fixing costumes. We have all sorts of outfits there, from fancy historical ones to modern clothes for shows. I adjust them to fit the actors and repair any damage from filming. I spend my days sewing, using machines and irons. I learned sewing from my mom when I was young, so this job feels like it's meant for me, even though the hours can be odd and the workload heavy. I love what I do and hope to do it forever. I met my husband Joe while working at the studio. He looked after the actors there. Since we saw each other every day, we became close over time. Two years later, despite our busy schedules, we got married. But just as we started our new life together, my mother got sick and passed away suddenly. This forced Joe and me to delay our wedding plans. Originally, we were going to have a simple ceremony with family at a local church. But now we had to save up for a proper wedding and honeymoon. Since our work hours were unpredictable, we decided not to rent a place to live temporarily. Instead, we moved in with Joe's mother, Emma, at his family home. Both Joe and I had lost our fathers early in life, so we understood each other's pain. Since my mother was the only parent left for me and Joe worried about his mother being alone, living together seemed like a good idea. I wanted us to get along with Emma, but it turned out to be a nightmare. Emma didn't want to accept me as part of the family. To her, I was like a thief who stole her son. As soon as we moved in, she started harassing me. Emma's criticisms were relentless. She pointed out every speck of dirt, making me feel like my upbringing must have been lacking. I endured her constant nagging, pushing myself to clean until my hands were raw and bleeding. Her standards for chores were sky high. Cleaning, laundry, cooking, everything had to be perfect. If it wasn't up to her standards, she made me do it again without a second thought. And the more tired I got, the worse it got. No matter how hard I tried, she always found fault. I even remember staying up all night scrubbing the sink once. It seemed like she was never happy with anything I did. She insisted I handle all the household chores, and when I tried to balance them with my job by working from home, she only made more demands. Every day felt like I was living Cinderella's story, slaving away at chores. Did you finish the laundry? There's a torn curtain upstairs. Fix it. You're good at sewing, right, Sally? I'm sorry, I have urgent work. Can't the curtain wait until the weekend? I pleaded, hoping for some understanding. What are you saying? If it's left like that, who knows what the neighbors will say. Fix it right away. Emma snapped back, showing no sympathy for my workload. I found myself constantly juggling work and chores, often working late into the night because there was always something to do. Emma seemed to take pleasure in seeing me worn out. She was like a cruel bully, especially when Joe wasn't around during the day. Our relationship felt more like that of a boss and a maid. I did all the housework, but I couldn't easily talk to Joe about it because of my pride. I tried my best to fulfill my duties, but it wasn't just the physical strain that wore me down. It was the constant mental pressure. Sometimes, Emma would invite neighbors over for lunch, and those occasions were unbearable. She would be even harsher in front of them, and I could hear them gossiping about me. Seriously, she's such a terrible daughter-in-law. I have to correct her every single day. My son doesn't see it but I'm not fooled. She's just so unlikable and clueless. I listened to the neighbors' laughter, feeling like they were agreeing with Emma's harsh words. It hurt deeply, even though chores could be finished, the hurtful words stayed with me. Every day felt like I was reaching my breaking point. If things kept going like this, I feared I might lose my sanity. But it wasn't just Emma. Joe had an older sister, Sarah, who was 38. Sarah lived nearby with her boyfriend and was quite tight with money. She'd often come over for lunch at our place, probably to save on food costs. What made it hard was that she never gave a heads up about her visits. So I couldn't prepare enough food for her. She'd just show up, eat, and leave. And she had this habit of claiming everything as hers. Things at her parents' house or ours, it didn't matter. One day, I finally spoke up, Sarah, could you please let me know before you take something? She must have told Emma about it. Did you tell Sarah not to come over anymore? Emma confronted me. What? No, I didn't say that. I defended myself. So you're saying Sarah's lying. Caught between Sarah's deceit and Emma's cruelty, dealing with either one alone was already tough. But having to face both of them together made the mental burden even heavier. One day, 
As I walked past the room where Sarah and Emma were talking, their voices were loud enough for me to overhear. It's like having a free maid. How nice. I'm jealous. Send her to my house too, Sarah remarked. Maid? Am I not a daughter-in-law? I couldn't help but interject. I had secretly thought of myself as nothing more than a maid, but hearing it said out loud was unbearable. It felt like something inside me snapped. That night, I finally opened up to Joe about how I was feeling. I can't do this anymore. I tried to be patient, but living with Emma is unbearable. Please, I want us to move somewhere else, I confessed to Joe, feeling a weight lifting off my shoulders. After a moment of silence, Joe replied, Okay, we've saved up enough money. Let's find a new place soon. Really? I'll start looking for a place right away, I said, tears of relief streaming down my face. Little did we know, Emma was standing right outside our room, overgearing our conversation. We had no clue this would trigger her strange behavior later on. But from that day forward, the once oppressive days started to feel brighter. I had one dream, to wear a wedding dress that I had made for my own wedding. After all, sewing was my profession. Filled with determination after talking with Joe, I immediately ordered a large amount of fabric online. I decided to focus on making the dress as my new purpose. That's what I resolved to do. I began sewing the dress secretly in my room, away from Emma and Sarah. But one day Sarah, who often popped by unannounced, caught me. Wow, what's this dress? It's beautiful to have your own handmade dress, she remarked. Hey Sally, I'm getting married in two months. Could you make my dress too, please? Yes, renting is just a waste of money. I want to keep wedding costs low, so please, she insisted, true to her penny-pinching nature. I hesitated, but since she agreed to cover the material costs, I agreed to make it. I started working on Sarah's dress first, since our wedding was still far off. Sarah asked me to keep it a secret from Mom, hinting that she planned to tell Emma she was renting the dress to get financial support from her. Whatever Sarah paid me for materials, she was determined to get back. Her thriftiness was almost impressive. I even talked to Joe about it, and he said, Sis never backs down once she decides something. I'm sorry, but it would really help if you could make it for her. With his encouragement, I agreed, feeling positive and motivated since I was getting paid. I saw it as practice for making my own dress without spending on materials. I also hoped it might improve my relationship with Sarah. So I focused on dressmaking between housework and my main job. Even Emma seemed to catch on to what I was doing. She'd occasionally peek into my room. Sarah's wedding was coming up fast, and the dress was almost done. Then one day, Emma came into my room with a smile. You're working hard again today, aren't you tired? Her sudden change in attitude was unsettling. I'm going to make some coffee. Why don't you take a break? She offered. Really? That would be great. Thank you, I replied. As Emma left humming, I felt a strange unease. Emma making coffee for me? That was unheard of. Could it be something more sinister? Different thoughts raced through my mind, but I tried not to worry. I got back to work, adding the final touches of lace. The end was in sight. Despite it being Sarah's dress, I found myself putting love into it. Suddenly, I smelled coffee. Emma knocked on the door. Sally, may I come in? She asked. Oh, well, sure, I replied. The next moment, I was shocked. Emma entered with a tray piled high with cups and saucers, all filled with coffee. Emma, wait, it wasn't just for two, I protested. It looked like she was preparing for a party. The tray was so heavy her arms trembled as I instinctively moved to stop her from entering further. Oops, Emma pretended to trip. The sound of cups breaking and coffee splashing everywhere filled the room. For a moment, I couldn't comprehend what happened. Everything felt like slow motion. Looking down, my yellow-colored dress was stained like a giraffe pattern. Ah, I screamed involuntarily. I did miss the brief smile on Emma's face. Oh no, I'm so sorry. It wasn't on purpose. Did you get burned? Wait, is that a dress? I thought you were going through trash, she babbled. I was speechless. The shock of her actions left me frozen. Then Emma feigned concern. Oh dear, you can't have your wedding like this, can you? My suspicions turned into certainty. Emma was trying to sabotage our wedding. Her plan was to ruin our plans to move out after the wedding. But I couldn't afford to be angry now. I rushed to the bathroom with the stained dress, frantically rinsing off the coffee. 
I knew the stain would set if I didn't act fast. Emma watched with a malicious grin, offering help that I coldly refused. I was filled with anger and panic. Then someone unexpected appeared behind Emma. It was Sarah. What's this? Are you bullying Sally again? Sarah questioned, noticing the tension. No, I just accidentally spilled coffee on her dress, Emma replied, seemingly enjoying the situation. But then things took an unexpected turn. What? Are you serious? That's my dress. Wait, what? Sarah exclaimed, bewildered. Emma was speechless, realizing her mistake. You're Sarah? What do you mean? I can't believe this. I had her make my dress. What am I going to do? My wedding is in two weeks. Emma panicked like never before, while I listened to the ridiculous exchange. I continued washing the dress I had been working on for months for my sister-in-law. As I washed, I realized something. I hadn't told anyone. I was making the dress for Sarah, so Emma must have thought the dress was for me. She wouldn't have deliberately spilled coffee otherwise. If she had known it was for Sarah, there'd be no reason to ruin it. Joe and I planned to leave this dreaded family home after the wedding. To Emma, I was always the intruder who stole her beloved son. She couldn't bear the thought of me taking him away, so she tried to sabotage our wedding, thinking it would keep her son at home. Such petty thoughts led to Emma's bizarre actions. Sarah was furious, blaming Emma and attacking her. How could you do this? Everything is ruined. I can't believe my own mother would destroy my wedding, she exclaimed. I'm sorry, Sarah. Please forgive me. I didn't know it was your dress. You don't think I did it on purpose, do you? Emma finally spoke her true feelings while I pretended not to hear and continued washing the dress. Then a man's voice interrupted. So you thought it was Sally's dress and deliberately stained it? Everyone turned around at once. Oh, Joe, when did you get here? I asked, surprised by his sudden appearance. Joe stood there with a mix of disappointment and disbelief on his face. I had been so focused on washing the dress and listening to their argument that I hadn't noticed Joe's arrival. He had been silently observing the ugly quarrel between his mother and sister. Joe began to speak slowly, his disappointment evident. You saw Sally working hard on that dress every night, and yet you deliberately stained it. That's truly despicable, he said sternly. Emma and Sarah were taken aback. Emma, in particular, had probably never imagined being scolded by her son, whom she cherished so much. Joe continued calmly yet sadly, I'm disappointed, Mom. Sally endured your attitude all this time, hoping that one day you might change. She was patient for my sake because you're my mom. His words brought tears to my eyes. I had mistaken Joe's kindness for indecisiveness and submission to his mother but now I saw him as a man determined to protect the woman he loved. Joe's firm stance, though unexpected, made me fall for him all over again. He addressed Emma, and it all comes down to this. I can't overlook it, Mom. Sorry, but Sally and I are leaving this place as soon as possible. I'll stay until the wedding for your sake, but I can't stay any longer. This time it was just a dress. But who knows, Sally could be in danger next time. It'll be too late then, Mom. Danger? I would never put her in danger. How can you even say that after ruining Sally's hard work so casually? Emma's denial was met with Joe's palpable anger. Despite his frustration, Joe didn't resort to harsh words or an overbearing attitude. Instead, he quietly expressed his anger towards Emma. His expression, a mix of anger and deep sadness, was something I had never seen before. He was confronting everything he believed about his mother, who had always doted on him. Emma's usual quick wit and aggressive remarks were replaced by tears, leaving her speechless. Even Sarah was stunned, shifting her gaze between Joe and Emma. Later, Sarah decided to cancel her wedding, so close to the date, and she wouldn't get any of her money back. It's not my fault at all. Emma was the one who paid for it, Sarah insisted. So Sarah wasn't losing any money, but Emma seemed to finally regret her thoughtless harassment that had gone too far. The shock of being scolded by her son also left her weakened, but the consequences weren't confined to our house. Sarah's sudden cancellation angered her boyfriend and his family, leading to their breakup. Sarah continually blamed Emma for this outcome. After we left the family home, Emma occasionally contacted us, asking for money. One reason she didn't want us to leave was the financial aspect. While living together, we contributed to the household expenses, but Emma had no income apart from her pension. 
it seemed she had been relying on our money. Every time Emma called asking for money, Joe refused. Mom, why don't you work? There are plenty of jobs out there. We need to be independent, you and us. Please leave us alone, Joe pleaded. Despite Emma's pleas not to be abandoned, Joe remained firm. His sense of duty seemed to drive his resolve. Eventually, Emma found work as a janitor, which ironically suited her strictness with cleaning. It was somewhat amusing. Meanwhile, Sarah, after breaking up with her boyfriend and moving back in with Emma, stopped working altogether. She relied on Emma's part-time income and pension. I saw her once and she was unrecognizably overweight. Joe and I moved into an apartment and are enjoying our new happy life, free from snide remarks and sarcasm. Our life now is blissful compared to our time in that dysfunctional family home. We finally set a date for our wedding, a small ceremony with just friends and colleagues. We chose not to invite Emma and Sarah to avoid any disturbances, especially considering their difficult situations. But that's how it has to be. They brought it upon themselves. I've started making a new dress for the big day. It's going to be much more beautiful than the one that ended up with a giraffe pattern.